Welcome to the Splash Assass Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live After Show. Although this week, we are just the unofficial show, because there's no Jeff Lewis Live, therefore no after to be discussed. However, there is plenty more, including some Bravo talk and fun news stories in Jeff's honor that I know he would enjoy. But first, I want to start with an example of how being grateful doesn't matter. (laughs) Okay, hear me out. Now that it's getting warmer, this is the month that all the bugs in the world come out to play. So this might be for real relatable instead of our normal Jeff Lewis relatable. I'm already talking about Jeff so much. Oh my gosh, I hope that Monroe is having fun so the rest of the fam can enjoy the trip as well. Because as I'm sure you remember, Monroe made her vacation boundaries very clear that if she doesn't have a great time in Paris, no one will. I mean, fair enough. Again, it's relatable, just like this. So my parents told me last week about how they had an ant infestation at their house (laughs) and found out that the ants go marching in via the front entrance and pathway. But get this. (laughs) And sorry, PETA, if you're listening, as I'm sure you are. But after spraying some fun chemicals on them, my dad... (laughs) This isn't funny. It's so sad. Um, He took a blowtorch to to the pathway outside and he basically sent them up to Aunt Heaven after making their last moments on Earth scorching hell. Oh my fucking blowtorch the shit out of these ants. So the point of this is that later I was thinking to myself how grateful I was that I didn't have ants. I mean, at my place, I got 99 bugs, but an ain't ain't one. Oh my God, an ain't ain't. Okay, um, but cut to this weekend when I spotted, no, the first fucking intruder marching across my very own kitchen counter. Oh my God. And it wasn't like a baby ant. This thing, it had muscles. It had muscles. It had girth. It had speed to it. It had fucking speed. Fast forward to today, I have now killed my ninth ant and counting. Ninth ant and counting, my new TLC show. Uh, Yeah, no, I too am facing a serious... I- now qualify this as a serious infestation and I'm absolutely petrified to find the source I have to find the source and I don't want to like I do not want to find Ant Zero oh my god because fun fact they don't usually travel alone so if there's a pile of them no I'm going to borrow my dad's blowtorch and take it to my fucking kitchen oh my god I hate ants oh they're Hell hath no fury like an Amy facing a bug infestation. Ugh. Although it has been a fun activity for my cat Finnegan. He doesn't kill them, but he tracks them for me and starts meowing till I come with a flip flop. (laughs) I call it the fatal flop. (laughs) And with each flip of the fatal flop, I send one more ant up to heaven. Like father, like daughter, I suppose. Wait, talking about dads for a second, I'm sure you have all heard by now that Al Pacino, age 83, and Robert De Niro, 79, both are having newborn fucking babies. Newborn newborn babies. If 83-year-old women were having babies, we'd be having a fucking field day with this. Yet Robert and Al are casually mentioned in the media like, as if we're supposed to say, congratulations? What? To an 83-year-old man? Congrats for changing your newborn baby's diaper and then changing your own? Like, what the actual fuck? My theory on it is that this is allegedly for a purpose. As in, having to do with some stem cell shit, okay? Part of a bigger ploy these guys have with their doctors to keep themselves alive and young for as long as possible. I'm just saying don't rule anything out. Science nowadays, I don't like it one bit. I don't. And you know what? People freaked out about Janet Jackson having a baby at 50. At 50. Imagine the world's reaction if Janet Jackson had another baby 30 years from now. 
Are you Joe? You guys, we would all freak out. But again, these guys, no, I just say Al Pacino, right? Already has a granddaughter who's 25 or 30, like, which is very possible. Then she could technically like be the one to help raise this kid. So the kid could be raised by its own grand, grand great. Wow. My brain is broken. My bra- If it was the granddaughter, it would be the aunt. I don't, grandma i don't know what it's all fucked up it's all fucked up what would it be no i think it technically would be the aunt but all i'm saying is that unless it's an unforeseeable tragic accident i don't think that you should be changing baby's diapers and the dad's diapers at the same time Okay, so let's just move on to Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Now, even if you don't watch the show, you will have fun hearing about this, I promise. And usually I don't give spoilers. I won't really, but since there's no pressing drama really going down and no JLL to recap, I'll do a few more deets than usual. So one of the guys on the show, Amir, self-admittedly, he doesn't know as much about the black culture as the rest of the castmates and kind of like led a bit of a more sheltered life, I believe. And there's this theme throughout the show of Amir learning the history of black people through the lens of Martha's Vineyard. For example, they had a little beach party, which is normal for a fun summer Bravo show. But for the first time ever, we got a little history lesson, too, as one of the girls, Jasmine, told the story of Inkwell Beach, which since it's Juneteenth, y'all, some black history for you. Guys, we're so dynamic here in Splash Assass. What the fuck? We're talking shit one second and then learning shit the next. Okay, but the rude ass racist white people called this beach Inkwell Beach because they said that uh, that's what all the dark skin looks like. I think what they meant to say is it looked like a fucking fashion runway because it was just a beach of fucking fabulousness. Okay, so then in last night's episode, they were making a soulful Sunday meal. Talk about fab. Oh my God, it looks so fucking good. Okay, forget about paying Jeff Lewis $10,000 for dinner with him. I will pay Preston on the show $10,000 to invite me to the next Vineyard Soulful Sunday. (gasps) I'm talking mac and cheese, collard greens, which Jasmine points out. And again, bless her soul for teaching us along the way. But she was saying that it was the cheapest food to get. And for slaves, they were given all the scraps left over from the slave owner family dinner. So they had to make the best with what they had and turn the cheapest food into the most delicious delicious Uh, the point of it soul food you just got to put a little soul you can make soul food out of anything which just like Amir I did not know that either and I just loved getting to learn this little tidbit because Summer House Martha's Vineyard production they did a quick little old-timey montage as a visual explanation when Jasmine was talking and I just want to say Bravo, bravo, fucking bravo to this show for adding a new layer and not just giving us these beautiful people in a beautiful location drinking too much alcohol, which yes, we love that formula, but now we get a little sprinkle of history and I fucking loved it. Then the absolute craziest thing happens that I have ever seen in my life. It was, a, talk about a citizen fine, it should have been a citizen's arrest. Okay, so there's food all over the place. Like Soulful Sunday is just to the extreme. It's a literal feast and I was drooling the entire time. Now, the second that they all go to grab plates, in the quickest shot, this kid Nick this kid Nick, as everyone, the hot food is hot and ready, everyone's grabbing their plates. He's chowing down on a fresh banana. What? What, like an actual fresh banana sitting in his paws? He's right before he sits down to eat the very soul food that I am over here begging to have a portion of. So... I don't know what the fuck that was about. Like, oh, I'm just prepping my stomach and having a banana appetizer? No? no? Does that help expand the stomach? Or were you trying to fill yourself up so that you didn't overindulge in all of this soul? Because to me, you don't have a soul if you're not willing even... Okay, so Nick is wicked healthy, right? So that's probably his thing is like, yeah, I love the food smells good and is delicious, but that amount of butter I'll be shitting all night. Like, 
okay, we all have levels of IBS. Shout out Jameson. And so <laughs> I'm just going to casually bring up Jeff Lewis Live people all the time throughout today's episode. Um, just in honor of them. Shout out to them all. Miss ya. Love ya. Okay, so I understand Nick wanting to be healthy if that was the reason. But if you can't for one meal of like this, and again, it was just food everywhere. It was a feast for kings and queens as they were, but he was the fool in the background eating a fucking banana. I can't get over that. And I can't trust people that can't let being healthy go for one meal. Just one, just one meal. Have the banana in an hour if you're so hungry, you know? But until then, there were green beans, chicken wings, candied yams, again, mac and cheese, collard greens, skirt steak. Wait. <laughs> oh my God, it makes me giggle because they kept on saying skirt steak like a few times throughout this episode. And <laughs> it just makes me picture a steak in a skirt. <laughs> Like a little ballerina tutu if we want to get specific. <laughs> okay. So later Preston hosts a pride party and the guys have five minutes to come up with a dance. Okay, I'm telling you, this show got off to a slow start for me, but they have absolutely stolen my heart. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because they are fucking fun. Some are supposed to be fun and they are fun. Like the amount of shit that goes down in one, just one scene alone. But I'm telling you, they've maybe left the house once and they are keeping this thing alive and going. They don't just have arguments. Like there's pure entertainment moments. Like again, the boys coming up with this dance routine or the montage history lessons or even just walking to the fucking car for dinner once. Oh, I guess, wait, they did leave the house that one time. But the girls, they were twerking to the car. And even that was next fucking level. Like they were doing handstands, flips. They were just, it was, at a, I was just loving them walking to their fucking car. I could have watched that on repeat all hour. So uh, these, they just got it. They got it. These people got it. The only thing is that now that there's two summer house shows, we need to change the original title. I, I'm so sorry. We all know how I feel about being the original and having to switch titles just because someone new came to town. However, it is clear that the Martha's Vineyard cast, they deserve a second season, which I'm only a fairy right away. So again, Preston, please invite me to your next party. Love you. But so it's just... When you keep on saying Summer House and then Summer House MV, it's like, no, it needs to be Summer House Montauk and Summer House Martha's Vineyard. So, so sorry to the Hamptons, but hey, it happens to the best of us. People make shows with similar titles and we... <laughs> We just got to roll with the punches, y'all. So the episode ends with a fight between the married couple in the house, Jasmine and Silas. They're like the anchor couple, you know. But earlier in the day, Silas asked her not to iron his pants. And she did anyways, got a mark on them. He flipped out, continued the fight later in the night, basically saying that she better learn to iron correctly. <clears throat> and it escalates. And the whole episode ends pretty disturbingly for the previews with him yelling at her next week to the point where other castmates in the house are like, what the fuck is happening? And I'm just saying, whether or not you watch this show, I swear everyone will have an opinion on the way this fight goes down at the start of next week's episode. Like, unless there's some miracle Hail Mary that gets thrown, my prediction is Silas shall not be winning the Hearts of America. But as for Jasmine, I fucking love you, girl. I love you. And also, so here's the thing about the fight. Like, he asked her not to iron the pants. She did anyways, and something happened to them. Now, I get this in the sense of, like, when people do your laundry for you. <laughs> oh, my God. Talk about being ungrateful. What a little brat. No, but, like, I'm talking when you specifically ask somebody not to do your laundry. When you're like, no, I'm going to do this. Don't put it in the dryer, please. What? And then they do it anyways. And they're like, oh, I thought I was just being helpful. And it's like, okay, well, now my entire wardrobe will fit a toddler. And I don't think enough Manjaro in the world will let me ever wear that shirt again. So thank you for that. But again, it's never what you do. It's how you do it. And the way Silas is talking to Jasmine, 
Mm -mm, mm -mm, y'all i'm telling you check it out if you feel like getting fired up now to cool things down let's switch on over to real housewives of atlanta which started with a, a cryotherapy scene what the as if that's still a thing it just it felt so dated like and the cryotherapy is when they go into those things and get like frozen to death for two minutes. So we just, the whole point of the scene is to watch them awkwardly talk in the lobby, awkwardly talk on chairs in the lobby afterwards, and then spend a few minutes getting frozen to death. So, but I feel like they should have been pretending to, I don't know, like play pickleball or get a vagina facial or whatever trend people are into these days. I don't keep track. <laughs> I do like how I chose pickleball or vagina steaming, though. Great options. So Sheree hosted a Gucci brunch at this restaurant called Toast on Lennox. Fucking love the name. Love the name. And shout out to Toasty on Lenny because the editors included some shots of random patrons food in the opening, which you've got, you know, I love that. The food looks so fucking good. Like, it's not just a waffle. It's like waffle with drizzled syrup and the fresh powder and brrr, I keep on talking and thinking about food. Like, it's going to be one of those days for me. I call it a black hole stomach where I just, I can never get enough. It's like the food is going nowhere when I eat it and I'm forever hungry. Which is pretty much every day. But at this restaurant, you also get a nice tour of their beautiful decor. <laughs> Because as different girls storm out, the cameramen following them, you just get to see all these different angles. I just, I would totally add this restaurant to my food tour stop, shall I ever visit Hotlanta. But the theme of the brunch is to keep it Gucci, y'all. And of course, they all bring out their designer label best. I would totally be the girl that's in TJ Maxx. <laughs> You know, you always need one Maxinista around all the fashionistas, you know, just to remember that you can ball on any budget. Now, at one point, Marlo, she was very heated and is outside and, <laughs> and she goes, I don't want that energy that's going to wear on me. You know, I wear that shit on my sleeve and I don't want that on my Gucci Python. Get that shit off of me. <laughs> As she wipes her Gucci sleeve, she's like, get it off of me, wiping herself off. It was amazing. And I just want to say, thank God they gave Marlo a peach. But in both Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, and Real Housewives of Atlanta, there is a lot of the typical Bravo fighting going on. So in honor of that, plus the fact that both of my cats have iconic birthdays, Oliver's being April 20th, aka 420, and Finnegan's being today, which of course, happy Juneteenth. So in honor of all the cat fights, my Insta story is dedicated to my fluff babes. Do you remember when Leanne Morgan, <laughs> she was on Jeff Lewis Live and she said eventually she had to hire somebody to take over her social media because if it was up to her, <laughs> if it was up to her, she would only post videos of her cats. <laughs> Talk about relatable. I am the same. Also for Juneteenth this morning, I put on the shirt that I bought from the Black Lives Matter Foundation. <laughs> and it made me giggle because a few days after I donated and bought the shirt, it was announced in the news that the head of the organization allegedly misappropriated fucking funds to go live a lavish lifestyle in L.A., I'm sure somewhere right near Chateau Lewis. And I, it was just so classic that the second that I donate, the scam was revealed. I'm over here thinking I'm doing a good deed and turns out I was paying the electric bill at a mansion in the hills. But to that lady, I hope you had the time of your life. For real, though, she must have had fucking fun. But shame on you. And next time I'm going to support a small local black owned business instead. Moving on to some news stories that Jeff Lewis would definitely be interested in. The first was a Netflix film crew over the weekend that got attacked by sharks near Hawaii when they were filming. So it was a tiger shark attack. They actually got attacked twice in one day. So it was real serious. I'm talking. They were in inflatable boats trying to get shots of like turtles or something random like platypus. And instead, the sharks lunged out of the water and popped their inflatable boats with their teeth. Like, I hope that the cameras were rolling for that. That's the footage we need to see. 
And there was also a story about a man who got hunted and killed by a black bear while he was sipping his morning coffee. You guys, black bears are like giant dogs. Like, they are not supposed to be murderers. Again, we all know I'm obsessed with Montana, where I used to live, and the grizzlies. I still have my bear spray. <laughs> I have my bear spray by my bed in, ca- in case an intruder comes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my weapon of choice. We're all getting bear sprayed. Um, but so so grizzlies, yes, that's common for them to just want to kill us for funsies. But black bears, they're not supposed to do that shit. Again, they're supposed to be just like giant dogs, like you go boo, and they're like, ah. Ugh. Just like that. That's exactly how they sound. So <laughs> I'm just saying, and this was in Arizona of all places, the black bear attack. I'm just saying, I think that the animals are officially revolting. I think they're officially revolting after the fucking revolting state of the union that we've left this earth in. Like, we've seen the, how the whales are attacking boats, and I'm just saying, the ants, they're taking over this condo. So I'm just saying, these animals are getting a little more ballsy, and I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Also saying that I really do want a TV show kind of like a documentary series with interviews from actual videographers for all these nature shows and the stories behind how they got the shot and all the crazy things that have happened just to get the shot. Like I'm sure they've experienced some terrifying close encounters that we would never want to, but we want to hear about. So putting that out into the ether, ether, uther. (laughs) And just to end on another fun history fact, because we can talk about history this week because (laughs) it's like the teacher's out and we have a substitute. Okay, so we get to veer off topic a little. I know the teacher, a.k.a. Jeff Lewis, would not want to talk about this shit, but we are on Splash of Sass. Now, King Tut, this is... (laughs) (laughs) This is the fact I need to tell you about. So back in the day, it just got revealed. They thought that he died from a disease like malaria. And he was around the age of 19, which is crazy enough to think that he was king at 19. I mean, but then again, if you saw the pictures of Prince Louis, Prince Louis, um, King William and uh, Princess Kate. Yep, those ones. Prince Louis is the youngest of all of them. And there were adorable media pictures from the like changing of the colors or something this weekend. Some celebration. They always have some fun festivities going on there. I want fun festivities. Tradition. Um, So I'm just saying that the pictures of Prince Louis, he has my vote for king. He is fucking hilarious. He's the cutest thing I've ever seen. He makes the best. He's so, talk about entertaining. He's, uh, that's what I want out of a king. I want entertaining. (laughs) That's clearly the most important thing. So we're skipping over Prince Charles, Prince, what's the other one? George. Yep. Sorry, Charlotte. I don't think you ever got a chance. And straight to Louis. Off with their heads. Now, the fact about King Tut is they thought he died from malaria or some disease. Turns out, guys, (laughs) turns out it was basically the equivalent of drunk driving (laughs) reckless driving he crashed his fucking chariot he was chariot racing while he was drinking an old like medieval liqueur and he was basically drag racing with his boys except on old school chariots and smash bang turns out long live the king does not apply to everyone so r.i.p to king tut and r.i.p to all of the ants that i am about to go fucking kill you guys it is my mission to find ant zero and (laughs) blowtorch the shit out of them no i'm kidding i'm not going to but i'm definitely not saving them so don't think I'm a hero (laughs) but if I do find the queen I'll let her go long live the queen and hopefully Queen Monroe again is having the best time in Paris oh I've missed them but hopefully they don't miss us and they're pulling a Margaret Joseph's and they're just collecting an arsenal Except this time, it's an arsenal of fun fucking stories to tell us when they come back next week. And we will be here to recap. But in the meantime, we will be here all week talking about anything from Bravo to King Tut. Who the fuck knows? Please follow Splash of Sass Podcast, like, subscribe, all that shit. 
tell your cats if you have cats. Tell your aunts if you have aunts. And if not, maybe, I don't know, tell somebody else. Okay, I love you guys so fucking much. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. I love you, I love you, I love you. Bye. Splash, splash, splash. Splash your sails, splash your sails.